Hello. I do not know how long the signal will hold, but I'm going to read to you from this book, and I'm guessing the screen is going to be glitchy. You might have to watch the replay. I'm not sure who needs this today. Somebody does, though. Hold on. Somebody needs to hear this chapter from a book called The Circle of Stones. I'm not going to turn the camera around. I'm just going to read to you. This book is by Judith Durek, D-U-E-R-K, Circle of Stones, Woman's Journey to Herself. I flipped open to this and just really got a strong impulse to come and read it. So whoever needs it, enjoy. And of course, just, you know, a disclaimer that I'm not talking about clinical depression here. I'm talking about the kind of depression that has to do with creative impulse. Okay, somebody needs to hear this. So, and I'm going to talk kind of loud so you can hear me over the water. And I apologize if the signal doesn't hold. I'll keep talking and you'll be able to catch it on the replay. A sense of her process. If a woman is trapped in a collective framework, unable because of family or economic pressure to give time to herself, her need for rescue may fall to the unconscious, and its response may come in the form of a depression. Sometimes into the lives of women who seem to be successfully fulfilling the standards of the surrounding society, depression may come as a settling embrace. It may come to a woman who is terrified that there will be nothing there inside if she allows herself time to rest, to separate from her extroverted hyperactivity in the outer world. Or it may come to a woman who vaguely senses a different way, a more elemental mode than she is living out. Perhaps she has dimly glimpsed a way more in touch with herself and life that would reflect more truly her own feelings and life values, yet she has chosen as she has chosen. Her choices may have seemed better, safer, all she was able to do at the time. The old story, unable to leave behind that which one has been taught is sensible, practical, normal, rational, proper, decent convention. Better to regard the group over the individual, the publicly acclaimed over the privately treasured, the objective over the subjectively valued. Into such a life, depression comes as a gift bringing the chance to strike root in a deeper ground inside herself. Depression comes as a gift, forcing one to listen to the voice of the self within. Depression comes as a gift, wrenching one from the comfort of the collective to the isolation of one's own feeling values, from the safety of the wide gate and broad way to the doubts and fears of one's own unmarked rocky footpath, a gift. For hidden in the seeming safety of the broad way was stagnation and illness, death to the possibility of becoming oneself. Depression comes as a gift that stops one from hurrying briskly, confidently into the market stops one from rushing to the shopping center to buy one more bargain blouse for an already overcrowded closet, stops one from emptily mouthing what one no longer believes in anyway. Depression stops time. And one settles into one's own waters as a sailing vessel without wind, without wind, without momentum, and one sinks into one's depths, and somewhere deep inside in the beehive tomb, one sits alone and weeps. Depression comes as a gift asking that a woman recognize her own substance and trust it as the quiet, steady voice of her own truth. As she trusts it, hearkens to it, attends as it unfolds, she learns that of herself never de about allowed to develop when her allegiance was with the collective. She learns that of herself never allowed to live nor helped to speak. 
depression serves a woman as it presses down on her, forcing her to leave behind that which was not of herself, which, which had influenced her to live a life alien to her own nature. Her suffering, now substantial, insists that she no longer deny its truth. She can no longer keep a stiff upper lip or pack up her troubles in her old kit bag and smile, smile, smile. Or as one woman struggling with her weight said, rise above it all. These phrases were said with harsh smiles and self-condemning voices by three women who had castigated themselves for being unable to deny depression. Now each woman was facing her own pain, seeking to simply be within it, each trusting her own darkness to reveal her truth. I had to give up my old idea of who I was, all my old beliefs. Finally, I was ground to a halt. All the enthusiastic bustle, it all ceases. One drops into an abyss, nothingness, emptiness. Time itself warps, slows, seems to stop. In an absence of happenings, the realm of matter feels one's senses, smells, sounds, textures. At last, there is time enough to be with one's surroundings. I sat in a wicker chair near the window. A raindrop ran slowly, a single raindrop, very large, down the pane of glass, all the way to the bottom of the window. It sat there for a little while, then another drop started at the top of the pane. It was very comforting. With the humbling of the old ego position comes a slowing of awareness that allows one to notice wordlessly one's left hand, warmed by the cup held in it, the fingers on the right, cramped from the handle of the cup. Time. Time, the infinitesimally slow passage of time from microsecond to microsecond to microsecond. From the first fluttering flakes... Through an eternal night of silent, softly falling snow, stillness. Depression asks that the attitude toward one's life be changed. That the source of authority be recognized as no longer outside, but now deeply within. That one relate to each event, task, and moment of one's life personally, personally, subjectively. Depression demands that one's life be viewed no longer objectively as time or energy available to be spent in service to external authority, be it religious, state, professional, or even family, but to be held sacred and lived moment by moment as one's own. That's the end of the reading. So what if depression was your gift that made you stop listening to all the voices outside of you and forced you to turn around and listen to the voice inside of you. The voice that is waiting to speak has been waiting to speak possibly your whole life and that you are never encouraged to use. What if you imagined an iron collar around your neck and the key in your right hand? What if you imagined turning that key and removing the collar from your voice? You might not speak clearly in the beginning, and you might say things that you wish you could say better, but at least you will be speaking, because now is the time to say whatever needs to be said. For whoever this is for, the depression is only an encouragement to look in the mirror and give yourself permission to speak or write or create whatever it is that's been waiting inside of you to be born for so long. Have a wonderful day.